Hi everyone, Boom here with a tutorial for Rocksmith streamers. Now if you've watched my stream, you know a lot of things happen automatically around me based on what's happening in Rocksmith. Like when I start a song in Rocksmith, well I'm always changing stuff around, but currently I get a text-to-speech message with the song info. Boom is about to play Buddy Holly by Weezer from the Weezer album. Yay. Rocksmith pops up on the screen. My crowd pops up and cheers for a few seconds. The Rocksmith lyrics start floating around on the screen, and some other effects pop up. During a song, I'm using data from Rocksmith to change things in real time. So my kitty grows in relation to the current note streak. My hair gets RGB effect at certain accuracy levels, and different color versions of me pop up at different accuracies. There's lots more I can do. I'm thinking of fire when I miss notes, but you get the idea. And when songs end, a bunch of stuff happens. I get a text-to-speech of my score. 97.48062% accuracy. Nice. Any crazy camera effects get reset, Rocksmith and lyrics get hidden, the applause comes out for a few seconds, and then it switches scenes to my home scene. I even have it set up so when I'm in the Rocksmith tuner, it automatically mutes Rocksmith and OBS so my viewers don't hear me tuning. So to connect your OBS to your Rocksmith, you need to download three things. Rocksniffer, Streamer.bot, and Thorsten's code for Streamer.bot. I'll put links to all three down in the description. First link will take you to Rocksniffer, Click the this side, latest release, and download the zip file. The next link is to streamer.bot. Just click downloads and download the zip file. And the third link is to Thorsten's code. Again, go to the side, latest release. And for this, you're going to download a text file. So when you're done, you should have one text file and two zip files. So let's start with Rock Sniffer. You don't really install it, you just open it and extract it and run it. I already have Rocksmith running. Now the first time you run Rock Sniffer, it'll take a long time because it's gonna parse all of your song charts. You can see, let me drag it over here. You can see it's going through them. So let me, let me stop the recording and I'll bring it back up once this is done. Okay, now that Rock Sniffer did its initial run through, let's see what it looks like when we, when we start it again. Okay, parses a few songs, it does some things and, and it's good to go. It looks a little weird, but you just start it, minimize it, and that's all you have to do with it. If you want, and I suggest you do, go into the add-ons and set up that little widget. You see a lot of Rocksmithers have that widget that has the song title and their accuracy and the time. It's pretty cool. This is where you get it from. And one last interesting thing about Rocksniffer is it gives you these output files, text files that show you the current time in the song, your current note streak. I've been using these for a while to do some of my tricks, but it's it's not as efficient and it doesn't give you as much information as the, the as Thorsten's new script, which is the way I'm going to show you to do it. Okay, so Sniffer is up and running. That's all we have to do with it. We just basically start it at the beginning of our stream, minimize it, and let it do its thing. Next, let's set up streamer.bot. That also doesn't really get installed. You just extract the zip and then open it up and run the file. There it is. Now, I'm not going to give a full tutorial on streamer.bot. There's a lot you can do with it, and there's plenty of other tutorials out there. I'm going to assume you know what you're doing, or, or assume you'll go watch some of the other tutorials, and I just really want to show you the, the basics of what you need to do to set, up, to set up this integration. So this isn't the complete tutorial, but let me show you how to connect Twitch and OBS. So first, go to Platforms, Twitch, Accounts. There's a lot of tabs to go through. Make sure you're actually logged into your main account on Twitch and click login and it'll connect your it'll connect your broadcaster account. Then go back to Twitch, log into your bot account, come back here and log in, it'll connect you to your bot account. Then we go to the stream apps tab and right click, add, and this is where we connect OBS. So we're using using version five of the um, what's it called? The WebSocket. I'm just gonna call it OBS. Connect. And tell it to actually connect. All right, we're almost at the, the heart of this tutorial, Thorsten's script. Now, the way StreamerBot works is actions. Right now, we have no actions. And triggers. So you make an action, which might be to change a scene in, in OBS. And the trigger can be a, a voice command, a chat command, a channel redeem, something like that. So let's bring in our commands. 
The way we do that is we go back to that text file that we downloaded before with Thorsten's code. Open that up. I, I know it's a little scary. We don't have to understand this. Just control A to copy it all. Control C. Select it all and copy it all. Then go back to streamer.bot and click the import button. Brings up this little menu and paste it in here. You see that creates a list of actions that it's going to create and we just click import. Okay, and a bunch of actions uh, just popped up in streamer.bot for us. Now, I know it seems like a lot, but these are just options. You're not going to use all these. I'm going to explain how it all works. It's not as complicated as it looks, but you don't have to program all this stuff. You're just going to probably use a few of these things. And let me shift over the menu here so you can see this, the sub action. The way actions work in StreamerBot is each action has, well, can have a lot of sub, sub actions. So when the action is triggered, when you use your voice command, your, your chat command or whatever to trigger an action, a lot of things can happen. And as you can see, there's no sub actions yet for almost all of these. In fact, there's only one action that has sub action. That's the one that's doing most of the work, and that is our scene switcher. See, I'm in the way. I'll move myself out of the way, but there's a lot going on here. Let's go through it. Actually, one more thing before we get into this. This script is doing a lot of things. This is, is checking Rocksmith every second to get all these this information from it, but this action needs to happen. I already said actions only happen when they're triggered. So we're going to trigger this to happen on a timer every second. The way we do that is we go to Settings, and we go to Timed Actions, right-click to add one, and we move over the menu. We could call it anything. We could just call this Rocksmith Scene Switcher Timer. Make sure it's enabled, make sure it's repeating. I'm going to set it to happen every one second, and we need to pick the action. And the action is that when we were just looking at the scene switcher action. Okay, so now this is happening. Everything in that action is happening every second. Let's go back and check it out. So the first thing you need to know is that there's two ways to use Thorsten's script. There's default mode, uh, which is like the easy way to use it, the basic way to use it. And then there's sort of an advanced mode, which is the way I use it. So let me show you how to set up default mode first. Default mode assumes that you have three scenes that you use with Rocksmith. A scene that you go to when you're in OBS, when you're in your menu. A scene that you go to in OBS when you're in a song. And a scene that you go to in OBS when you pause a song. So the way you set it up is you click these lines. And just so you know, the green lines are our Thorsten's explanations and instructions. The black lines are the lines that are our actual code that do things. So you click this. And where it says your menu scene, type in the actual scene in OBS. Mine is mine is live home or something like that. I'm not actually going to use this, but I'm just, just showing you how to, how to put it in there. So you do the same thing for your song scene, same thing for your pause scene. And then you're good to go. You can stop watching the tutorial if that's how you want to use this. You're all set up. When you go to Rocksmith, when, when you're streaming Rocksmith, when you start a song, it'll go to the song scene. And when a song ends, it'll go back to your, your, your menu scene. So now let me show you advanced mode. I actually don't want it to switch scenes when I start a song. I start songs on different scenes. I don't want to use this automatic scene switcher at all. So what I do is, under global behavior, I change it from whitelist. Whitelist is, is saying that it's only going to work, the script will only work, if we're in one of those three scenes that we set up here. I'm not using that, so I'm changing this from whitelist to, and he says right here what you could change it to, always on. So now, no matter what scene I'm in in OBS, this script is still going to work. Another option is blacklist. Like if I don't want this to work when I'm on, in my starting soon screen or something, I can set it to blacklist and put in my starting soon screen in my blacklist. I'm just leaving it as always on. So finally, I'm going to switch, uh, the, I'm going to set the switch scenes from true to false because I don't want it automatically switching scenes I want it if I wanted to switch scenes I'll tell it to do it you'll see how I do it in a minute and I make sure that this thing section actions is true that's where, what we're going to be using is this section actions and that's all you have to worry about when it comes to this if you want to look at Thorsten's code you can click this and it brings it up but don't don't I mean if, if you like this stuff look at it don't touch it don't mess with it if you have any question Thorsten said right here reach out to him with questions but that's if you're curious, that's where it all works. So now, since we're going to be using our actions to get everything done, let's move back over to our action. 
So the way these actions work, the way the way this whole setup works for me is the script is triggering these actions to happen when these these things happen. Now a lot of them I'm, I'm not really going to use. Um, enter bridge, enter chorus, enter uh, riff, enter solo. If it's an official chart, it'll have those things. A lot of CDLCs uh, probably don't. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's just not worth it to me. I actually think the solo thing is pretty cool. A lot of songs do have the solo charted or, or tr tracked in the chart. So when the solo starts, have the camera zoom in on your guitar. That's pretty cool. Uh, personally, I'm not going to use it, but I think it's pretty cool. I'm mostly going to use the last two, song start and song end. And the way you use them, well, at, at this point, I'm kind of hoping you know a little bit about streamer.bot, but they're just streamer.bot actions. So let's open up song start and you see there's nothing here. And let's say when song starts, I want a, a pop-up to happen, a certain pop-up. So go to OBS and I'm in the way, but you go to sources and set source visibility state behind me there. Um, and this pops up. So you pick your scene. I'll pick, I have a lot of scenes. Uh, where's my nested pop-ups? Oh, we're going to be here all day. Okay. Nested pop-ups and have my, oh, perfect. Have my crowd pop up. So when a song starts, the crowd pops up. Let's add a delay of five seconds. And then let's duplicate this one. But I'm making a change instead of having it be visible, have it go to hidden. So now when I start a, when a song starts, the script will automatically trigger this action, the action, and the action will do these sub actions. Make the crowd visible, wait five seconds, and then make the crowd hidden. And as you can imagine, in my real setup, my, my song start has a lot more sub actions and my song end has a ton of sub actions. So hopefully at this point, you're ready to make things happen in OBS when Rocksmith, when a song starts, when a song ends, and when you go into any of these different states. But I haven't shown you anything about the stats yet. Let's go into that. So going back to Thorsten's GitHub, you can see there's a list of global variables that he provides for us. The accuracy, I like the total notes since launch. So you can have the notes counting up your entire stream or your accuracy since launch. There's a lot of cool stuff. Let me show you how to get that working in StreamerBot and then in OBS. So I'm going to go back to our main scene switcher action where, where everything's taking place. I could have this happen in another action, have this action trigger that action, but just, just to keep it simple, let's just do it right here for now. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get that variable from Thorsten's script into StreamerBot so we can use it. So the way you do that is you right click to add a sub action, go under core, globals, and Unfortunately, away, but under globals, there's one called global get, and that brings up this menu. The variable, and we want to make sure we get it exactly right. So let's go back to Thorsten's page. Okay, current hit streak with the um, H and the S capitalized. Back, and we'll give it a def just do it the way I did it variable name and destination variable give it the same name give it a default variable of zero don't make it persisted we want we want to start over when we start the stream over and click ok now it put that right at the beginning let's drag that down to the bottom okay so here it is get temp global current hit streak and the next thing is we want to take that and put it into OBS somewhere so in OBS I'm gonna create a text source I'll just create it right here now okay so all I did is just in OBS I right clicked under sources, add text source, and put in this test test thing. Now let's show how this is going to control it. We need to create one more thing, one more step in, in streamer.bot. So we right click again to create another sub action under OBS, sources, and again, I'm in the way, but there's a source called set GDI text. So do OBS, sources, set GDI text. That brings up this. So we have the scene that I'm in. We have the source. Uh, I just called that test is what it is. And the text is going to be um, current streak is current hit streak. Spelled the same way as we did before with the capitals. 
and surrounded by parentheses signs. And if I click test, let's make this a little smaller. It's saying current streak is, and it's putting that in because it doesn't have a number for it. But watch what happens if I start playing Rocksmith. But before I do that, there's two quick things I forgot. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. First of all, we have to grab this thing that we just created and drag it to the bottom. And as soon as you do that, you see our, our streak, it, ch it changed to zero because it's grabbing the hit streak with the default so that, as zero. And then after grabbing that, it's then setting this text through this command to that number, which is zero. The other thing we have to do is we have to click the execu execute code, the thing I said not to look at. We need to look at it a second. There's one thing we need to do is we need to click this compile button that makes it work. Um, I also found that I had to restart StreamerBot after compiling it for, to, for, for it to work, but now it should all work. We have compiled our code, we're grabbing our global, and we're pushing to OBS. So let's start up Rocksmith and see what happens. There it is. Once a second, it is updating our streak. If I miss a note, within a second, it goes back to zero. Start hitting them again, it starts counting my streaks. So, it works. You saw, that's it. That's all it takes to set it up and get it working. So that was just pulling the current hit streak. Look at all these other variables we can pull. We can put any of them on screen. We can also do things with them. I can read the uh, artist name, and if it's a Van Halen song, I can put a, a background of Van Halen behind me. If it's a Led Zeppelin song, I can put Led Zeppelin behind me. Um, we could also just not just put them on screen, but do things with them. You saw how before I took the current hit streak, I, I did some things in StreamerBot to it, and I used that to change the size of the kitty on my screen. So there's a lot we can do with this. So I hope this is helpful, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I feel like this is really powerful, and I'm just starting to figure out some of the possible tricks that we can do with this. Uh, also, this is a pretty complicated tutorial. There's a lot of moving pieces. If, if something isn't working for you, if I didn't explain something well, please let me know in the comments, and I'll try to help out. Thanks for watching.